content warning. Sudden change in images slash colors. Food. This video contains spoilers for the game Definition of a Guest. What makes a home comfortable? Of course a home is supposed to provide protection, but what gives it the special significance it's often attributed with, separate from other forms of shelter? Definition of a Guest proposes an answer to this question through its contrast with hotels, of all things. Definition of a Guest is a mix of mediums, starting out as an art installation of the same name, then adapted to a game and an essay. The essay takes place outside of the game's frame, held in a separate folder with art and videos. Despite its disconnected placement, it informs the experience to the extent that I believe it's essential. So before going into the game proper, I will first give a quick summary of the essay, Home Does Not Equal Hotel, written by fictional author Gustav G. The essay proposes that when a person stays at a hotel, they produce a guest. That's G-H-U-E-S-T, the combination of the words ghost and guest. A guest is a being whose lifespan is that of the person's stay at the hotel until they leave, where the guest's metaphorical life ends. During their stay, a guest will technically have the physical comfort of the room that they're in, but never the mental comfort that a home provides, whether that be due to reminders of potential luxuries with paywalls, the traces of employees and former guests in the room, or the transitory nature of their existence. Thus, the hotel itself takes on a horrific element, where it's only shelter for the body, never the mind. The essay itself treats its subject matter with a level of playfulness through its tone and use of a fictional author, but underneath its facetious nature, there's an honest proposition on what constitutes true comfort. With this, we lead into the premise of the game, the showing of a documentary named Definition of a Guest where the essay's ideas are made manifest. It retains its humorous bent from the essay by having the documentary be shown in the middle of a motorway. We play as an unknown viewer watching with an acquaintance, and from the start there's a sense of unease due to the location of the film showing. The pack of cars below are minimized by the all-encompassing void that is the night sky taking up the majority of the screen. The viewers discuss their strangely exposing surroundings and the documentary to come, knowing little of what it will contain. The movie begins, opening on a hotel room, but no action is taking place. It turns out you control the documentary as well, being able to walk around the environment. The documentary takes place in this single hotel room, and the text on screen details the guests stay there. You make some choices as to how they spend their time at the hotel, but the player never physically leaves the hotel room. There's nothing to interact with inside the room only making inconsequential choices such as choosing to order room service or go to the hotel restaurant, though its effects are confined to the text. The experience lasts about three minutes, and it is dreadfully boring throughout. The room is lifeless, static to the utmost extreme, and the text lacking anything of interest. After what seems like an agonizing amount of time, the guest checks out of the hotel. But then it repeats. You check in as another guest, and the same experience plays out, in the same exact room, with the same exact choices. The first time going through already tested your patience, but it asks you to give it another go. The viewers are confused as well, but still continue to watch out of curiosity, as does the player. As you control the documentary and the viewers, there's a sudden burst of player interaction. Juggling the viewer's conversation and the guest's stay is a brief respite from the jury experience just a minute away. The interactions will fade quickly, leaving the same drab events to play through. One hopes for any changes, any surprises, maybe deciding to sit at the desk instead of watch TV, but it affects so little as to be meaningless. You're stuck in the same lifeless loop. The viewers ultimately get bored with the movie and leave, eager to return to their home reflecting on the general anxiety they are left with. Home seems like a return to normality after what they experienced. Unfortunately, the player does not get to leave with them. They are instead thrown fully into the documentary, albeit in a black and white color scheme now. The little life that was sustaining this picture has fully exited the experience. 
and yet I went through it one more time, in the hopes there was something more. I finished another loop, and still, it offered so little fulfillment. There would be more guests, but they live a similar existence that all previous guests had, with no hope of true comfort. Echoing the essay, the documentary attempts to instill the former's horror within its viewers, and the two that we watched fell right into it. Home seems much warmer to them than the predestined experience of a hotel. The game leans into this horror aspect to deliver its message, with its setting and ambient droning, but at times it could be too forced to resonate with me. The viewer's shift from curiosity to unease feels a little too on the nose, especially with the line about wanting to see their furniture in bed again. Their presence is safeguard to make intentions obvious. In this way, the game on a surface level is on shaky ground, as its message relies on a narrow perspective. It presupposes only one general type of hotel stay, that of the temporary stay to then return home. With its length, it can account for the variety of hotel stays that would complicate its themes, and while the essay tries to account for some, it ignores most of them. Same for what constitutes home in this context, as it assumes home is always a comforting refuge, since without this assumption, the message falls apart. The essay also introduces ideas that neither it nor the game can fully explore their implications, such as the employee as poltergeist, leaving uncomfortable holes. Despite this, the definition of a guest excels through its use of boredom. The lack of mental comfort in a hotel paralleled with the player's lack of fulfillment creates a confrontational experience. The player is subjected to slight shifts in interaction, strung along until they finally decide to quit. Homes in hotels serving as a gateway to exercises in comfort and control. It both mirrors and elucidates the usual comfort that a game provides and it's here where the horror aspect transforms in its transition to a video game. Its horror is magnified for the gamer that expected the typical video game experience. Where many games give gamers the illusion of control, that their experience is their own, definition of a guest disillusions those that come in with those expectations. The few extra clicks to get to the essay make it explicit from the start that it will not indulge the gamer in their assumptions. Instead subverting them, and forcing the gamer to play on its own terms. The viewer's conversation, the only sympathetic perspective to the gamer's desires, fully denied once they exit the experience. The hotel room, a consistent rhythm of choices, though their lack of meaning will lead the gamer to feel ineffective at exerting any will on the space. The game appearing to loop infinitely, a never-ending stream of content. The gamer able to exist in the space until they ultimately give up. They even leave with the knowledge that their time spent was not unique. Anyone who comes along will be just another guest like them. Definition of a guest refuses to let the gamer settle, but only due to them refusing to do so. There's a hotel room to look around. You can take it in and leave with the satisfaction of having been in the loved-in space, haunted by previous guests. But that's not enough for them, so they attempt to graft their wants onto the game, as they do and the room will provide, but doing so ultimately reveals how hollow that checklist of desires truly is. In the end, it's all still comfort. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider supporting me on Patreon or Coffee. Patreon is if you want to support me monthly, and Coffee is for one-time support. These videos wouldn't be possible without the generous support of my patrons and coffees. Any amount helps this channel keep going. Anyways, here's my Twitter, my Instagram, my channel link if you want to subscribe, and some other videos I've made. Well, that's all I had to say. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around.